Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Laura Lett with Mosaic Consulting Group, and I will be your moderator today. This afternoon, we're going to discuss system optimization, telltale signs your Ulti Pro system needs optimizing. I want to start off by giving those of you who don't know us a quick overview of who Mosaic is. We're an Ulti Pro only consulting group. That means we cover everything from implementation to outsourcing, including optimization, like we'll be talking about today, as well as support and strategy. We've been an ultimate software partner for many years, and our team of UltiPro experts has worked with clients of all sizes and across all industries. There's so much that UltiPro can do. You may not know if you're using the system to its fullest capabilities and getting the maximum ROI for your business. We often say that you don't know what you don't know, Taking a deep dive into your Ulti Pro system can reveal opportunities to work smarter and more strategically, automate manual processes, and free your team of tactical responsibilities so they can focus on moving the needle for your business. Today we're going to cover what an optimized system looks like, your team and their access, the decision-making process, business interruptions, and some success stories. Together, we're going to look at some questions to ask to determine your system's current level of optimization and opportunities to make UltiPro work more efficiently for you. Some events in the life of your company where you may want to perform an UltiPro gut check from post-implementation phase to company growth. We're also going to explain what a system optimization review can reveal, how to capitalize on those opportunities, some best practices, and success stories. Our goal is that you leave your time with us today having recognized some of your own challenges and opportunities you may be facing, and some things you need to take a closer look at, or a possible solution or desired end state in one of the success stories we'll share with you. Leading us today is one of our subject matter experts on the topic of optimizing your UltiPro system, Jared Leffler. Jared has performed dozens of system and process reviews for clients of all sizes and across all industries, healthcare, information technology, retail, gambling and entertainment, hospitality, education, and financial services. During the review process, Jared guides our clients through an examination of the business rationale for existing processes or the need for new processes or systems, policies, and procedures, and helps to reveal opportunities to consolidate multiple manual processes, bridge gaps created by staff changes or company growth, and apply best practices across the organization. Jared has walked clients through challenges ranging from mergers and acquisitions to system consolidation to loss of institutional knowledge and new technology platforms. He digs deep to understand our clients' challenges and business goals, brings a fresh perspective, determines the scope of issues, breaks gridlock, and helps clients to add new functionality within their UltiPro system. Before we get started, I want to go over some housekeeping notes for the webinar. First, our most common question, will I get a copy of the presentation? Yes, you will. We will send that out at the end with a link to our blog on the same topic. Also, how to ask a question. Um, just know that we will include time at the end, but you can always ask us to stop along the way by pressing your question in the chat bubble at the bottom of your screen, and I will ask it on your behalf. And now I'll turn it over to Jared. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining today. I'm very excited to discuss the topic of system optimization reviews with you today. If you are joining us for this webinar, you likely already have an idea of what, op what an optimized system is and wondering if you have one. As we discuss system optimization with UltiPro, if something jumps out at you or you think, hey, that sounds just like us, let us know. There are a lot of reasons why you might need to be optimized. Today, I will focus on some of the most common ones. There's so much that UltiPro can do that you may not be aware of system uh, capabilities you aren't utilizing. UltiPro is a significant investment. The more you know about your system and the areas it can help, the better your ROI. If you just implemented UltiPro, did you have the right implementation team in place to make decisions on how to best configure the system? Did you carefully consider each configuration item? Or did you make UltiPro match your old system? With any large implementation process, many clients feel they are rushed and forced to lift and shift, 
ending with a system that mimics the one being retired. How long into implementation were you when you realized, hey, this looks exactly like what we already have? If your intent was to make UltiPro like the old way, then why did you upgrade? Major opportunities for improvement to processes and functionality are often missed or overlooked when this is the path your team takes. It doesn't even necessarily have to be intentional. Most of the time, it happens without you even realizing it until you're close to going live or already live. Many times, implementations can be so hard and fast, and there doesn't feel like there's enough time dedicated to getting it right the first time, especially towards the end when everyone is exhausted and you're just ready to be done with it all. Sometimes it just feels easier to put something in to get it done quickly and get it moved off your plate. Sometimes it's the wrong people in the room making the decisions, or maybe they aren't the daily users who will be doing a bulk of the daily maintenance. Did your team configure workflow approvals to require several levels of approvals without realizing the impact it would have on daily processors or how it might slow them down? You know, at first it sounded like a great idea, but now it takes approvals too long to process and some get stuck where they may never get approved. How do you get yourself out of a situation like this with the least impact to your employees and your administrators? Now that you've implemented, is your system configured to be scalable? Will it grow with your changing business needs? Or did you just focus on the here and now? Can UltiPro consume another component company due to that acquisition? What about the 20% growth next year that your CFO just announced? We recently saw a client with over 200 pay groups, one for nearly every location and every branch of the business. There were so many because every time a new location was opened, it just seemed easier to give them their own pay group. Of course, this methodology was used in multiple areas of the system for countless business rules and processes. While that methodology may have worked five years ago, there were too many codes now to count and it began to spiral out of control. After optimizing with Mosaic, they found they really only needed eight. Imagine the amount of time savings that was instantly experienced just in payroll alone with that configuration change. It took that outsider's perspective to challenge thinking and to understand the why behind the need for so many pay groups. Turns out the team didn't even know. They had always just done it that way. What about when an employee with the most working knowledge of the system departs your organization abruptly? It happens more than you'd know. An employee may have all the access, all the know-how, and why behind UltiPro works. They've configured every business rule, automated every BI report, implemented many of the interfaces, and configured your security workflow. There are no backups. Documentation of processes are not complete or missing entirely. Suddenly, that employee is gone. There was no transition period, no warm handoff, and sometimes that person was your payroll processor. Other times, the entire team can re be replaced over a period of years, and now no one on the team understands the why or how UltiPro was configured the way it was. Now you just found out you have a huge merger coming this quarter. You still have your business as usual to tend to, but now a mini implementation on your hands. No one on your team knows what to do next. Where do you go from here? Now that implementation is complete, you've gone live and now you're doing data maintenance for the first time. And you're starting to realize that you may have missed out on improving some of your processes from the old system. You find yourself in a situation where you're entering data on your employees into multiple systems multiple times. How did you miss this? Did you do testing before go live? Did you test the right things? Entering data more than once can be painful. It takes time. There are opportunities to make mistakes, and sometimes the data is missed at its second entry point or overlooked altogether, causing breakdowns, inconsistencies, and they just trickle throughout UltiPro. What would you do if you had to touch all data points three or four times? We had a client that found out just that. They were entering data three to four times and five or even up to five in different systems and databases. The data was a mess and no one understood why items were being touched so many times. Sometimes it was just to appease a report for executives. 
Other times it was to fulfill vendor requirements in another database. And sometimes it was just because they'd always done it that way. How often is that your excuse? We've always done it this way, so we can't change. Well, it's time to challenge that thinking and find a better way. Ultimately, following the optimization review, this client found better ways of maintaining the data and even implemented new interfaces that interacted with UltiPro to relieve employees of entering data multiple times into multiple systems. UltiPro became the system of record and single point of entry was done there. Of course, we always recommend that UltiPro be your system of record. So for those of you on this call today, think about any work you are doing more than once and make sure you are considering the why behind it. Is it really necessary? You may even want to ask others on your team if they are doing this too, as chances are this is happening right under your noses and you don't even realize it. What about Cognos? If you run reports in Cognos, do you export them to Excel to manually manipulate that data? If so, you should be asking yourselves why. Why are we manipulating this data? Does this mean the data in UltiPro is inaccurate? Is there a better way to store this data? If you're constantly finding yourself in this situation, there are likely opportunities to be doing it better. And no, just because you've always done it this way doesn't mean you have to continue doing it. Likewise, if you find yourself manipulating processes to fit UltiPro, what is it that you're doing and how can this process be improved? It's 2019. And you'd be surprised how many companies still process their benefit elections on paper. Paper elections have to get into UltiPro for payroll deductions, which means another manual step for manual data entry. All manual data entry comes with the opportunity to make an error. We're only human after all, but how long will it be before that error is discovered? We had a client recently discover a single employee paid for family level coverage for nearly an entire year due to the wrong benefit option being selected during data entry. The employee eventually received their hefty refund, but how many other employees may have been impacted and how long before those employees realized this type of error happened to them? While this employee actually did have coverage, it goes without saying that it's equally possible someone with family coverage only had single coverage. You can see how devastating this type of error can be and how costly it can be to resolve. So now you're thinking, some of this sounds a little too familiar and you're starting to wonder how you got here. Well, you're not alone. Let's talk about some of these decisions, how they got made and whether or not they were the right ones. Like we said earlier, during implementation, things tend to move quickly. Decisions are often made by groups of individuals, but are those the right individuals to be making those decisions? Is the intent to make UltiPro like the system you are replacing, or are you adequately looking for opportunities to improve those processes? A lot of times, with the wrong implementation team in place, the wrong decisions are made. UltiPro ends up looking like the system you were just trying to get rid of, and once you're alive, nothing makes sense. Frustration is starting to set in, and now you have buyer's remorse. We recently had a client, shortly after implementation, begin to sub experience substantial growth. The client was adding two to three new component companies each month due to an aggressive acquisition schedule. Even though UltiPro had just been implemented, considerations weren't necessarily made to whether or not the business rules and codes were configured to be scalable. This company decided to work with Mosaic to conduct a full system optimization review, which exposed many opportunities to actually create processes and procedures on best practices for onboarding new component companies. The team is now positioned for better success and can more quickly bring on new companies on board. They are not that nervous or anxious about their rapid growth. They're actually excited for it and we're excited for them. In another case, a client had recently gone live and found that UltiPro was not that much better than the previous system. Implementation mimicked a majority of the old system. 
no new functionality was introduced. Security configuration was worse, so managers had less access than they were used to. Workflow was too cumbersome and nothing was getting approved. Processes in some case, they were more difficult to work around and employees were frustrated. In some instances, pay was actually negatively being impacted for employees because tax categories were wrongly selected and time files were dropping records. Of course, morale began to suffer. Employees lost confidence in their HR and payroll teams and executive leadership was furious. The client was desperate. They were ready to go back to their old product and forget everything about UltiPro, even at the substantial financial loss they would incur to re-implement the old product. During the re-optimization process, they realized all the untapped potential that UltiPro actually had. They found all the areas they overlooked during implementation. Within about six weeks of the optimization review analysis, changes were being made to their UltiPro configuration, which created a significant and noticeable improvement that was felt by all employees. Best of all, confidence was being restored. During the op optimization review, it was actually discovered that leadership placed the burden of implement implementation on the day-to-day -day staff, and there was little to no support or guidance on what they were to do. In the end, the employees did what they always knew, and UltiPro was just the same as the last system with no improvement. Maybe your implementation went okay, and this doesn't necessarily apply to you. But what happens when something breaks or doesn't work as expected? What do you do? Maybe you ask someone on your team. Maybe that person though, with all the answers, is out sick today. So instead you decide to log a case. But that case is taking longer to resolve than usual, so you decide to fix the problem on your own. Did you fix that problem or did you make it worse? Do you have enough written documentation to walk yourself through that resolution? Did you find the root cause of the problem or just address the symptoms? These are all things you should be asking yourself. We recently had a client try to fix an issue on their own without involving their team or ultimate software in their decision-making process. They ended up with an overly complicated job code and pay grade process that only made sense to them. It made hiring new employees a nightmare. Report reporting broke and other processes began to break down around them. Most of what they did had to be reversed and wiped out, but it took an even greater effort to repair than it would have been to implement properly from the beginning. It's about having the right team in place that can answer questions and challenge thinking to ensure that the best decisions are being made for everyone. After all, UltiPro impacts every employee, every time. So, if you're considering optimization, think about what team you'll have in place for these types of discussions. Make sure you're including those who will be affected by the changes. Make sure you ask them what their pain points are, but don't be afraid to ask them what's working well. When you're fixing something, don't break what works. Let's not make, make, let's not make the same mistake twice. Let's have the right people at the right time. So we know what a good team looks like and we know we need to make sure the right decisions are being made. But what other areas could be your pitfall with UltiPro? Access gives the keys to users to different parts of UltiPro. These keys drive what an employee should or should not see and do in UltiPro. We all know and understand why security is so important. So if that's the case, why is a quality security process often overlooked during an implementation? Do your employees and managers have too much access or too little access to the system? We had a client once that was helping managers get some additional access in UltiPro so that they could get data on their employees and run some reports. Working late on a weekend, this employee inadvertently assigned super admin level access to all employees in the company. When employees logged in on Monday to clock in, some realized that they had C-level access salary information. But by this time it was too late and informa information began to spread like wildfire. Employees began to share with others about their elevated access and that salary information 
was no longer private. This created great distrust throughout the company and employees lacked the confidence that their personnel information was properly being safeguarded. If my HR team exposed my personal information in this way, what else of mine isn't safe? Well, of course, that's an extreme case. Are you certain that access given to your employees is appropriate? Too much access can be just as bad as not enough in some cases. Jared, you've given us some great examples of how too much access can be a bad thing, but talk to us a little bit about some of the pitfalls of too little access and the log jams it can create, and how can a system optimization clear the way? Well, thanks, uh, Laura, for, for asking that question. That's a good question. Um, we all know, of course, that UltiPro access should be based on your actual job needs. Um, employees shouldn't have access that doesn't pertain to them. However, if an employee doesn't have access that they do require, they might end up relying on others to gather that information for them. So the employee then becomes dependent on another individual who has the access they require, which often puts the other employee in a situation where they may feel obligated to giving that information out, and they may not even be certain if they're authorized to view it. Then you have to think about how that information is being shared. Are they sending it in an unsecured email? Are they printing it out and then potentially forgetting it at the printer? Or did they load it on that personal thumb drive that they're later gonna lose at the gym tonight? They may even be pressured into providing their login credentials to help the other employee out because it's just easier than constantly being interrupted by them. We've seen employees lose jobs over sharing login credentials and accessing information that wasn't meant to be accessed by their current job or role in the organization. Sharing credentials puts all employees at risk, especially when those credentials are used for nefarious reasons. When providing access to UltiPro, your organization must carefully and thoughtfully consider the level of access that is required for all employees. And this is not just a, I think I might need this access. There must be actual business needs and they should be documented. You may already be doing this and if you are, that's great. But then ask yourself, when was the last time we actually reviewed our security? Is it still accurate? What if your HRIS analyst or your payroll manager just transferred to marketing? Do they still have their elevated access? It actually happens more than you think. Okay, let's move on and talk a little bit more about the decision-making process using reports based off of UltiPro data and how accurate they are. Does your team have the right tools and knowledge of UltiPro to support your organization? Does your UltiPro configuration match your needs and requirements? I always say, have UltiPro work for you and not the other way around. All businesses have their own processes and ways of managing their companies, and UltiPro can be configured to meet those needs in more ways than you can think. After all, why did you choose to switch to UltiPro if you were the one being stuck doing all the work. Do decision makers have the necessary available information to make appropriate business decisions? What types of dashboards and reports do your executives use? Are they even aware that dashboards exist? How stale then is the data being used to make those important decisions? Is your executive team making potential life-changing decisions on outdated data? This all goes back to manipulating data in Excel to get the information you need out of Cognos. If that is the basis of how you get your information from Multipro, you're doing it wrong. Cognos can run great reports ranging from duplicate bank account instances, which could point to potential fraudulent activity, to team diversity reports and turnover. Mosaic actually recently did a webinar on Cognos. Make sure to check that out on our blog and we'll include a link on the recording that we send out today with the presentation. Let's talk about how Cognos reports impact hiring decisions. How current and accurate is your data in UltiPro? Can your executives make timely decisions based on the information in UltiPro? Sometimes we find that terminations aren't entered for up to a month after the employee has left. Think of the impact that might be having on your hiring or your turnover reports. 
Ask yourself then, why are terminations taking so long to process? Why do we not know these terminations are happening? Can we improve the timeliness of our data entry to ensure we have the best reporting data at our fingertips and actually trust that the data is accurate? Is this an UltiPro issue or a training issue with our managers? Maybe it's a little bit of both. Your company put a lot of effort into certain business trends, expeditures, and you continuously strive to utilize the data and analytics at your fingertips to make those decisions. But is the data you are using accurate and up to date? When overtime hours spike, it may indicate you have a staffing shortage. Is the spike related to something seasonal or is it a complete mystery to your team? Using payroll data and HR analysis through Cognos, you may be able to better pinpoint where the issue is. Maybe it is seasonal, but it could also be related to a lack of training and employee dissatisfaction. How can you tell the difference with bad data? Next, does your UltiPro interface or does your UltiPro solution interface with vendors to provide real-time and accurate data on your employees? If UltiPro is interfacing with your vendors, that's great news. But when was the last time you reviewed those interfaces? Are they still working correctly? Does it provide the data your vendors need? Or does your team still find themselves manipulating data before it is sent off? Hey, Jared. Now that we've talked a little bit about what goes into making good decisions using UltiPro data and reporting, what about making good decisions when you're faced with something that interrupts your business, like a, a disaster? If you're impacted by a disaster, how do you know how to process payroll, for example? Sure. Well, we all know that no one is immune from disasters. And when you think about being pre prepared for interruption, you don't always need a weather forecaster, nor do you need to be in a disaster-prone region of the country. Being prepared extends beyond disasters. They can be audits, government shutdowns, loss of those key employees, fraud, or even fire. Are you prepared for an audit? Some audits may be planned, and others may be a complete surprise to you and your team. If the Department of Labor came to your office today, how prepared would you be, and what would they find? Are you prepared for disaster that could prevent you from paying employees? Clients that live in disaster uh, prone areas are likely to be more prepared for storms, but often overlook disasters like fires, earthquakes, and fraud. You know, Hurricane Harvey taught us a lot about disasters and the ability to process a payroll. When I ask clients if they have a disaster plan for processing payroll, the response is almost always, well, we bring our laptops home, we're good. But what if this time your payroll person was directly impacted by the disaster? Maybe their home wasn't damaged. They're good, right? Well, not necessarily. Do they have electricity? What about internet connectivity? Sure, they may have a little battery left in their laptop, but if they can't connect to the internet, what options do they have? There may be a Starbucks around the corner, but can they get there? Are roads and bridges open for them to drive to a nearby evacuation center where they might be able to find connection? If they do, is the connection even strong enough and reliable enough to process payroll? Is it even secure? The time to answer these questions is actually now and not during the actual event. And remember, like Harvey, some areas were without power or connectivity for several days. It's important to understand and consider what preparedness needs to you and your employees so you can build a plan that sets you up for success in the event of a disaster, rather than panicking over how employees will be paid. Last minute panic decisions waste your precious time and keep in mind, your payroll processor may be the one impacted and not available during the disaster. Have a plan in place and know what you're going to do. Plan for the worst case scenario, not the best. Define your processes and document them. Define your backups to these processes and know what to do before disaster strikes. So today we've discussed a lot of reasons why you may call upon Mosaic to review your system. You may have heard a story or two that sounds exactly like what something you and your team are experiencing today. Don't be embarrassed to speak up and ask for help. That's why we're here and trust us. 
we've heard it all. Hey, Jared, let's talk a little bit about how Mosaic can help start this process. What would you recommend? Sure, and thanks for the water break, Laura. I'm starting to get a little parched. <laughs> uh, when you request a system optimization review from Mosaic, your, your team is matched with a consultant who will visit with you and your team on site for two to three days. Remember not to repeat the past and make sure all the right people are in the room. While on site, we do a thorough analysis of your system and processes driven by hundreds of analysis questions meant to create discussion and based on discussion and your responses, we then build a plan that is specific and customized to your team's needs. We provide your team a ground zero understanding of your UltiPro configuration and processes, both current and desired. In the end, we can help you or guide you um, through ways to better configure and equip your team to utilize UltiPro and make it great. Our team of experts then can assure your team is taking full advantage of your UltiPro investment. Mosaic's core purpose is to make a difference and inspire confidence. The Mosaic team strives to ensure our work will make a difference for your company and will inspire confidence that the work is done and most importantly, done right. The challenges of launching and optimizing UltiPro can look like an unfinished mosaic. You may have all the pieces, but you may not know how to fit them together. That's where Mosaic Consulting Group can help. Let us do the heavy lifting for you.